In this lesson, we're going to look at the pressure in fluids. Before we do that, let's just remind ourselves about the pressure in a solid. Okay, so we've got here a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Now, in the case of a solid, for example, here we have a, a rock sitting on top of a surface. Well, the pressure always acts in just one direction. You'll know that the force in this case, due to gravity, will be acting downwards and the pressure produced by the rock against the surface will also act in this same direction. Now the reason for that is because the particles in a solid are all connected by very strong forces and they're all held in a fixed position. Okay, They can vibrate around all over the place but they're basically held together in a fixed position. They can't move where they want and a consequence of that is that the pressure acts in one direction through a rigid body. Now in the case of a fluid, well, fluids can be either liquids or gases. And uh, the direction of pressure in a fluid is radically different to that in the rigid body of a solid. So if you look at the particles in the liquid or the gas, we'll see that they're moving around with a whole range of speeds and energies. So we can say they are a range of speeds and this motion is completely random. They're moving in all directions, all over the place, bumping into each other chaotically. So we have random motion, and that's in the, in the liquid and in the gas. Unlike in a solid, where this fellow is stuck in this position and can't move anywhere, well, these fellows here can move around wherever they want. They can change position easily. Okay? So they can change position. And as they're moving around in this totally random motion, they're colliding with each other with different impacts and different forces. And they're also colliding with the surfaces around them. So they're colliding with themselves and with the surfaces around them. Okay, so if we take, for example, this leaf here as an example, looking at it side on. We've got some air particles coming in this way with high speeds bouncing off, others coming in slowly at different angles, others coming in at different angles still bouncing off. And there are millions and millions of these particles continually hitting leaf and bouncing off of it. Now the pressure that acts on this leaf, for example, or, or on the surface of your body when you're at the bottom of a swimming pool, is a measure of the average force exerted by the collisions of all of those particles over a fixed area. Okay, so we can say the pressure in a fluid is a measure of the average force exerted by the particles in the fluid, that's the gas or the liquid, over a unit area. Now, what is important about fluids is this. As a consequence of this totally random motion, whereas in the solid, the force acted in one direction, in the liquid or the gas, the forces actually act in all directions at any one time. So for example, if I take some point in the center of this liquid here, the pressure at the moment is acting in all directions. Okay? So we can say it's acting this way, this way, this way, that way, that way, okay, in all directions at any one time. Exactly the same with a gas. Right? Air pressure isn't acting just in a downward direction, it's acting all over the place. Let's just make a note of that, we'll move that up a little bit. Here we can say that the pressure in a fluid acts in all directions. And another important thing about the fluids is that wherever the fluid encounters a surface, then the pressure will always act at right angles to that surface. So if I take this rectangular object and place it in the fluid, then the pressure at the moment will be acting on this surface, it will act in this direction. But on this surface, it will act in this direction. On this surface, it will act on this direction. And on this surface, it will act upwards. It always acts at right angles to the surface. So we've got one, the pressure in the fluid acts in all directions. Two, the pressure produced by a fluid on a surface is always at right angles to that surface. 
Now you can observe this property of fluids in the practical demos section of the website. And for example, if you have some complex shape of a container like this, and it's filled with a fluid such as water, well, if you puncture the sides of the container, let's put it there, 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 and there. Well, the fluid will always project from the container at right angles to that surface. So obviously after that, it will adopt the shape of a parabola, but as it comes out of the surface, it will, it will be at right angles to the surface. The water will come out in that direction. Here it will come out in this direction, here in that direction, here in that direction, in that direction, it's a bit wonky, in that direction, etc. Right? That's to say, the force exerted by the fluid on all of these surfaces is always at right angles to the surface. Another interesting experiment you can do is take a container, for example, uh, fill it with water right up to the brim, put a card on the top of that, okay, and right at the moment, as we said before, because the pressure always acts at right angles to the surface, well, the pressure will be acting in this direction on the card. It will be acting downwards, the air pressure. But if I take the container now and turn it upside down, the air pressure now acts in the opposite direction, since it is still acting at right angles to that surface. In fact, the air pressure, which we will look at in a later lesson, produced by the atmosphere, is actually very, very large indeed. And it's able to support a column of water in this wave up to around about 10 metres of height because the pressure, the air pressure is so great.